Picture this. It's a dimly lit room, the soft glow of a vintage television screen casting a flickering spell on your surroundings. You're settled into a worn-out armchair, the anticipation and the air palpable. And there it is, the opening credits of the 1976 classic. All the president's men rolling in, accompanied by the hauntingly mysterious melody that instantly pulls you into its enigmatic world. As you sit there, engrossed in the unfolding tale of investigative journalism at its finest, memories may surge forth from the depths of your mind. Perhaps it was your first encounter with this cinematic masterpiece, an encounter that left an indelible mark on your psyche. Maybe it was the electrifying chemistry between Woodward and Bernstein, or the relentless pursuit of truth against all odds. Or perhaps it was that chilling feeling of unraveling a political scandal so vast, it sent shockwaves through the nation. All the President's Men isn't just a movie, it's a journey into the heart of courage, integrity, and the unwavering pursuit of justice. And now, as we venture further into the heart of this iconic film, let's uncover some captivating random facts that will deepen your appreciation for this cinematic gem. In 2005, Mark Felt, at 91 years old, confirmed that he was Deep Throat, a key source for journalists Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein during the Watergate scandal. Felt, the deputy director of the FBI at the time of the Watergate break-in, made this revelation before a Vanity Fair article in July 2005. This confirmation was supported by both Woodward and the Washington Post. Felt's role in leaking information was instrumental in uncovering the Watergate scandal. During the making of the movie All the President's Men, Ben Bradley, the editor of the Washington Post, reluctantly allowed the film to be shot in the newspaper's offices. He believed that cooperating would give him more influence over the production. Screenwriter William Goldman had a contentious encounter during the film's production. Initially, his screenplay was accepted, but he was presented with a new script by Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein, written by Bernstein and Nora Ephron. Goldman refused to read it and walked out. Only one scene from their script made it into the final film, a fictional scene where Bernstein outsmarts a secretary to meet the Miami district attorney. Woodward later regretted the decision to let them write that script. These behind-the-scenes stories add an extra layer of intrigue to the making of All the President's Men, a movie that delves into the Watergate scandal's investigative journalism. It highlights the crucial role of Mark Felt, the challenges faced by Ben Bradley, and the creative differences between the screenwriter and the real-life journalists. In the 1976 movie All the President's Men, Jason Robards Jr. was the preferred choice of Robert Redford to portray Ben Bradley. When director Alan J. Pakula joined the project, he agreed with Redford's selection. Interestingly, Bradley himself had a different actor in mind for the role Fred Astaire. During a meeting with Carl Bernstein, Dustin Hoffman noticed Bernstein's habit of smoking so much that it left traces of cigarette ash on all his shirts and ties. Hoffman insisted that this detail be included in the movie, along with the memorable line, Is there any place you don't smoke? The film's producer paid great attention to detail even having the production design department create replicas of out-of-date phone books to ensure historical accuracy. All the President's Men remains a classic that not only delves into the Watergate scandal, but also provides insight into the meticulous efforts behind its making. In 1976, the movie All the President's Men tackled the Watergate scandal, a pivotal moment in American history. While John Schlesinger, a British director, was offered to helm the film, he declined. Schlesinger believed that the story of Watergate should be told by an American, emphasizing the significance of this American political scandal. Originally, the film received an R rating due to explicit language, particularly the use of the word fuck ten times. However, it was later re-rated as PG, likely because the historical importance of the Watergate scandal outweighed the strong language, making it accessible to a broader audience. Notably, Robert Redford, one of the film's stars, had a personal connection to Richard Nixon. When Redford was just 13 years old, he received an award for his athletic abilities from the man who would later become president. Redford has shared that even at that young age, he found Nixon rather creepy, adding a unique personal dimension to his role in the film. All the President's Men remains a compelling portrayal of investigative journalism and a reminder of the Watergate scandal's impact on American politics. 
In addition to the Democratic National Committee break-in, the 1976 movie All the President's Men also alludes to the break-in of the psychiatrist's office of Daniel Ellsberg. Ellsberg, a RAND Corporation employee, leaked the Pentagon Papers, exposing the U.S. government's mishandling of the Vietnam War. This event serves as the foundation for the 2017 film The Post, a prequel to All the President's Men. The Post features The Washington Post, with Merle Streep as Katherine Graham and Tom Hanks as Bradley, grappling with the Pentagon Papers. This movie connects to All the President's Men as it concludes with the discovery of the Watergate break-in. It was later revealed that the Watergate cover-up unraveled, implicating Hunt and Liddy in the break-in at Ellsberg's psychiatrist's office, authorized by John A. Lichman, a key Watergate co-conspirator. The 1976 film concludes with close-up shots of news articles being printed on a teletype, creating a sense of real-time reporting. These reports, shown out of order, extend into 1975 culminating with a pivotal report in August 1974, President Nixon resigns. The move is interior Washington Post newsroom set, built on a Warner Brothers studio stage in California, was designed by George Jenkins, a former Broadway scenic designer. Jenkins recreated the actual newspaper's newsroom layout using false perspective to enhance depth and scale for the camera. The rear of the set featured diminishing desk sizes to maintain the illusion of perspective. Extras in the background were chosen based on height to maintain the set scale. The result is a studio set that accurately captures the size and scale of the real Washington Post newsroom. In all the president's men, these elements come together to portray a gripping tale of investigative journalism and political intrigue intertwining with historical events that shaped the nation. Jason Robards, J.R. S. Immersion in All the President's Men during the filming of the 1976 movie All the President's Men. Actor Jason Robards, Jr. took a unique approach to his role as Ben Bradley, the executive editor of the Washington Post. Robards believed it was crucial for Bradley to always feel present in the newsroom scenes, even when he wasn't directly involved in the action. To achieve this, he went beyond his script, and on days when he wasn't filming with other actors, he would come to the set and spend time in Ben Bradley's office. Robards would often sit at Bradley's desk, engrossed in a book or working on something, creating the impression that Bradley was always in the background, overseeing the newspaper's operations. This subtle but effective technique added depth to the film, making Bradley's influence palpable throughout. It also highlighted Robards' dedication to his role, and the meticulous attention to detail that went into the making of All the President's Men. This commitment paid off as Jason Robards Jr. received acclaim for his portrayal of Ben Bradley and won an Academy Award for Best Actor in a supporting role for his outstanding performance in the film. Robards' dedication to bringing Bradley to life on screen contributed to the movie's success and its enduring impact in the world of journalism cinema. In the 1976 movie All the President's Men, Frank Wills, the security guard who discovered the break-in at the Watergate complex in 1972, played himself. He had been fired from his Watergate job a few days after the break-in, and no reason was given for this. The one day he spent in 1975 playing himself in the movie was his first day's work since that had happened. Frank Wills' involvement in the film is a notable aspect of its production. His real-life connection to the Watergate scandal added an authentic touch to the movie. Despite being fired from his job after discovering the break-in, Wills returned to the scene, this time as part of the film's cast. This casting choice helped recreate the tense atmosphere of the time. Wills' brief but significant appearance in All the President's Men serves as a reminder of the historical events that led to the downfall of President Richard Nixon. It also underscores the impact of the Watergate scandal on those who were directly involved, like Wills. This film, directed by Alan J. Pakula and starring Robert Redford and Dustin Hoffman as investigative journalists Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein, is a classic portrayal of investigative journalism and its role in uncovering political corruption. All the President's Men remains a powerful and relevant cinematic account of a pivotal moment in American history. And that's a glimpse into the intriguing connection between Frank Wills and the 1976 movie All the President's Men. 
unveiling the behind-the-scenes secrets of all the President's Men in the making of the 1976 movie All the President's Men. Several intriguing behind-the-scenes details emerge, shedding light on the film's production process and the challenges faced by the filmmakers. Cinematographer's innovative technique, cinematographer Gordon Willis brought innovation to the movie by incorporating a customized split diopter sliding mechanism onto his camera. This device allowed for seamless adjustments within a single shot, eliminating the need for editing cuts. This clever technique contributed to the film's distinctive visual style, enhancing the audience's immersion into the unfolding story. Creating an authentic newsroom during the filming process, the production team faced a unique challenge when attempting to shoot in the actual Washington Post newsroom. Many Post employees were keenly aware of the cameras and, inadvertently, began to act rather than work naturally. To overcome this, the production team recreated the newsroom at a Burbank studio in Los Angeles, investing a reported $450,000 in the endeavor. The Washington Post played a role in ensuring authenticity by providing crates of actual newsroom refuse, including an open mail. Government directories, Washington telephone directories, wire service copy, calendars, and even stickers from Ben Bradley's secretary's desk. This meticulous attention to detail contributed to the film's realism. Ben Bradley's initial skepticism in his memoir, A Good Life, Newspapering, and Other Adventures, Ben Bradley, one of the central figures portrayed in the film, candidly expressed his initial skepticism about the project. When informed that Alan J. Pacula would direct the movie, Bradley and his peers questioned how Pacula's previous credits, such as Clute and To Kill a Mockingbird, would translate to portraying Dick Nixon and the boy journalists. This skepticism ultimately gave way to the success of the film, as Pacula's direction and the dedication of the cast and crew brought the Watergate scandal to life on the big screen with striking authenticity. In conclusion, All the President's Men remains a cinematic masterpiece not only for its compelling storytelling but also for the meticulous efforts invested behind the scenes. From innovative camera techniques to the recreation of an authentic newsroom, these insights offer a glimpse into the dedication and creativity that made the film a classic. As we draw the curtain on this cinematic journey through the intricate web of power, journalism, and integrity, we hope you've enjoyed revisiting the 1976 classic, All the President's Men. This gripping tale of investigative journalism at its finest not only captured the essence of a pivotal moment in American history, but also left an indelible mark on the world of cinema. As you ponder the film's enduring relevance, take a moment to reflect on your own connection to this masterpiece. Perhaps it's the unwavering dedication of Woodward and Bernstein, the suspenseful unraveling of the Watergate scandal, or the sheer thrill of watching truth triumph over deception. Whatever it may be, we invite you to share your favorite memories or thoughts about all the President's men with us and your fellow cinephiles. Let your voice become part of the ongoing dialogue surrounding this iconic film. Your insights and reflections add a unique layer to the collective experience of cinema, and they remind us of the power that great storytelling holds in our lives. So, whether you're sharing your thoughts with friends, family, or fellow enthusiasts, let the discussion flow and the memories flourish. Thank you for joining us on this cinematic voyage and for allowing us to spark your thoughts on all the President's Men. Your time and interest are deeply appreciated. Until our next cinematic rendezvous,